Welcome to the lecture series on Similarity Modeling 1 and 2, Seeing and Hearing in Computers. My name is Horst Eidenberger. In this last block of the lecture, well, it's actually not a block, it's just an add-on to make it easier for you, I would like to give you again the information that you also will receive in the pre-lecture meeting on what you actually have to do in the lab course. What you have to do is, you have to implement media understanding, similarity modeling. If you go for similarity modeling 1, you have to solve once uh, one problem. And if you go for both courses, you have to solve two problems. If you go for just one, then you can choose whether you want to use old-fashioned feature engineering or new deep learning. And if you do both courses, then whatever you chose in the first course has to be flipped in the second so that you have either one feature engineering and one deep learning or one deep learning and one feature engineering application so that you tried both methods both approaches in order to get a feeling for that plus in both courses you have to implement an audio method and on visual method that is the same so that you, after the lecture or after the lab course, you have, if you go for both courses, feature engineering experience in the audio and in the video domain and deep learning and, uh, experience as well in the audio and in the visual domain. Okay, what is expected of you? You should work in groups of two. You should use Python plus Jupyter Notebooks. You have to implement algorithms, do testing and evaluation. All the details are given in the e-learning system. This year we really focus on the Jupyter Notebook because it's exceedingly popular. Almost all libraries are allowed. So you don't have to implement your own Gaussian mixture model, nor do you have to implement your own Bayesian classifier or whatsoever. Okay. And you submit your project by email. Uh, if it is too big, then put it on some cloud and send me the link. Important thing is, before you can do that, as a requirement, you have to, re you have to summarize le the lecture videos. That is a prerequisite, so you have to do it before you start in the lab course. And that is something that you do individually not in as a group, but of every student I want such a summary. And that is actually your first so-called Prüfungsrelevante Leistung, and that means based on that um, I can grade you in the end. So, please also note that there is a mandatory intermediate attendant. the date of which can be found like all other dates in the e-learning forum. They are not here, nor in the pre-lecture meeting slides, so not to create any confusion. They are all in the e-learning system. Okay, so that's about it from the, from the side of requirements. The important thing is, since you have to <coughs> implement either deep learning or feature engineering, you have you either need a ground truth, a bigger ground truth, or a smaller ground truth. And that is the central problem of the course because all I provide is the media database. The link is again protected in the e-learning environment. Um, but I don't tell you in which frame you see Kermit the Frog, nor where you see a pig and stuff. So you have to make up your mind whether you do extensive annotation of such frames and then employ an easy to use classifier from deep learning 
or whether you manage to cope with less semantic information and therefore implement a more sophisticated feature engineering. So there is a trade-off here. The more complex the ground truth, the easier the learning is. Assembling a ground truth is tedious and boring. The more simple the ground truth is, the more sophisticated your feature engineering has to become. You should be in that situation because it is what you always have in practice. So you're practicing something that appears in the real job and you learn how to deal and how to understand what the complexity of the individual tasks might be. Okay, having said that, now I would like to give you a few hints what I would do if I were in your situation. So, if you go for similarity modeling one, you have to find Kermit and Waldorf and Stakler. So what you have to find is all frames. You don't have to draw a minimum bounding rectangle. I'm only interested in which frames do these three guys appear. If you go for similarity modeling two, then I want all pigs. That includes Miss Piggy, Dr. Strange Pork, the captain, and others. There are more pigs in there. Plus the Danish chef about whom I've just learned that he's actually the Swedish chef. I used to call him Danish chef. I don't know. Okay. The problem with the, with the Danish chef is that he moves a lot. The problem with the pigs is that their faces vary a lot. So they have only few things in common. Some are small, some are big, some move, some talk, others don't, and so on. Kermit is always the same. He has even a particular color that hardly ever reappears in the, in the, in the Muppet Show. Waldorf and Statler are, from the face, hard to distinguish. And also with other characters, sometimes overlapping. However, they have distinct voices. So that's why I thought that for similarity modeling one, these three characters might be the best choice. For similarity modeling two, I wanted to have more degrees of freedom so that you employ something more sophisticated. So my suggestion, if I were you, I would use feature engineering plus machine learning and similarity modeling two and deep networks, CNN, plus RNN for similarity modeling too. That is the split that I would take. Okay, now what would I do? If I were in your situation, the first thing I'd try on Kermit would be color. Kermit has a distinct green shape. You might also go for the dominant color. But you might also look for a, a huge green blobs or for a color histogram that includes the white parts. His hands are very fragile, so probably you cannot make much of his hands. But that thing, that combination of white, green, and maybe even the red mouth could provide useful cues. So this is something that I would try. Waldorf and Stadler, I would not approach over over color features, nor in, in the case of Kermit, you could also go for shape features because he has this distinguished shape. In Waldorf and Stadler, I believe audio is the best domain. I would think that they have distinct fundamental frequencies because they have these cranky voices that are very low and, and have these particular overtone structures. So one might employ spectral peaks maybe. Or even a zero crossings rate could could help in the terms of that. Or some other timber feature might as well help for, for Waldorf and Stadler. These things can be classified in rather simple forms. You could even try a Bayesian network or a Markov process on them. But of course you could also risk a decision tree, though it's overfitting. More interesting would be of course some K and N, K means. All these methods would be suitable, and of course you can also feed and train a support vector machine on that data, or a Gaussian mixture. So basically everything from the world of machine learning would fit for this data. For similarity modeling too, my suggestion would be to use on the Swedish chef audio. He has uh, this, these words that he keeps repeating, like smurre bread, smurre bread, rum tum tum tum, and there is a lot of fuss around so it's probably quite easy with a sequence of LSTMs plus maybe I-vectors 
which can be ready made, found ready made in other libraries. Never do anything, uh, assemble anything by yourself, it's not really necessary. <clears throat> you could try to find the Danish shelf. For the other pigs, the degrees of freedom are too big, in my opinion. So you have essentially two options. You can build a big ground truth that involves different scenarios, like 50% like of the data. But that's not what I would do. I would honestly go for the noses. They have, they have these pig snouts that can be extracted relatively easily and just build a classifier for snout recognition. That is what I would actually go for because that I think is the most rewarding. Maybe the same thing can be done with the ears. Huh? This is something I wouldn't do with the Danish chef because it just looks like the others. Compare Waldorf and Stateland and, and the Swedish chef, it's basically the same head, isn't it? It's not very, not very distinct. But the snouts of the pigs are all relatively the same and so are their ears. So this is something you could try and then you would go for a convolutional network for snout and ear recognition plus audio on the Danish chef and the thing with that, you can relatively easily solve the problem. Of course, that is just one approach. Many others do exist. Be as creative as you can. This is an opportunity for you to play around with funny data and try all sorts of methods. It should be the ideal playground for you to get a first touch, a first feeling for how multimedia information retrieval slash media understanding slash similarity modeling is actually done in practice because this is the most important thing you should take from the course to have a feeling for how hard is which problem and how can you actually approach it to gain in a word experience the toolboxes and the understanding are also important but eventually it all comes down to the practical experience if you have any questions on the topic on the proceedings, on anything from the contents of the lectures, as always, go to the forum, state your question there. The link to the forum can be found at the end of this video and it can be found in the TU information systems. Get in touch with your lecturer, get in touch with your colleagues, start a discussion and try to find a good way of solving the problems of the lab course. I wish you a fun, I hope you enjoyed the lecture series. And I hope to see you again later, maybe in another course, Media and Brain, when it's about artificial consciousness or in strategic gaming or in some other course. I wish you good luck for your exercise. Thank you very much for listening.